Hello and welcome to the video. This is a closer look at this model here that I looked at a week ago. This is one of the latest quadcopters, well whoops I guess, from Beta FPV. This is the Beta 85 Pro 2, although on the website it's saying it's also called the Meteor 85, but I'll refer to it as the Beta 85 Pro 2 because that's what's in the URL. Now this is pretty new and available with lots of different receivers. Uh, the An SPI FreeSky FCC version, be aware of that EU users, an SPI for Taba, and also interestingly the one I have here is the ELRS 2.4 gig. Now I looked at this quad very briefly a week ago along with the new ELRS radios, so I've had this week to kind of have a go with it and see what it's all about. So while I unpack it, let's talk about what this thing actually is. This is a 2S micro whoop. Although it's not a micro whoop, I would say this is like a pretty standard whoop. It's slightly bigger than the tiny whoops that you're probably used to seeing on the channel. And I quite like these kind of bigger whoops. I find that they give a smoother flying experience because those props are a little bit wider apart. And also because there's a little bit more prop area, you don't need the ridiculously high KVs and that potentially gives you a little bit more efficiency, which results in longer flight times. This being a 2S version also means that it can fly indoors and it easily has enough to fly outdoors as well. And I've been flying it outdoors in some kind of normal autumn weather where there is a stiff breeze and it's handled it absolutely fine. Now on the website it talks about the fact that this was inspired by Justin Davis and Nate Payne's Shutterbug 85 and it's all about reduced weight. This thing for its size is pretty lightweight. And for Whoop style models in particular, weight is really, really important. And this being a relatively lightweight model for the amount of power that it has makes it fun to fly. And we'll look at that in a minute. Inside is an F4 all-in-one flight controller. Uh, the motors on here are 1103, 11,000 kV uh, brushless motors with connectors onto the flight controller which is great makes it much easier to fix things the props are gem fan 2020 four bladed props the camera is the caddix ant camera uh, i think that's only the one uh, on this particular version i think if you get other versions it's the co2 micro camera i'm not a massive fan of the caddix and i think the performance is okay but it's only okay the canopy is set and the camera angle is fixed at 30 degrees and the VTX that's in it is a 25 milliwatt VTX although it does have a 25 to 350 milliwatt VTX which is what's inside here for this ELRS version. Battery on this is a 300 milliamp power 2S battery and it reckons the flight time is about three minutes and I think that's about spot on. I was hoping for a little bit more. So let's plug it into Betaflight using the supplied adapter cable and have a look at what the Betaflight setup is like. So clicking on connect, I get this weird error message. I've updated the latest version of Configurator, but I still get it. So I've been a little bit reticent to change too much on here. I didn't want to mess up the configuration. Now I have done a dump and diff obviously on this. Uh, so if you want to look at how it's all set up, then the information is down below. Version of beta flight that's on this is 4.3, so nice and current. Ports, the only thing that's set is smart audio for the VTX. Uh, by default, the motor direction is reversed, D-Shock 600, 8K gyro, 4K pig loop frequency, pretty standard stuff. Interesting that there's nothing in the SPI bus receiver provider, and that is to be expected because the receivers are SPI, Power and battery looks like this. I don't think it actually has an onboard current meter looking at the all-in-one flight controller. I think it's virtual, but it does a reasonable job. PID tuning is like this. Again, dump and diff back down below if you want to go and have a look. It is very, very fun to fly, very responsive because of its lightweight and power. To bind, you need to click in the bottom side of the receiver tab for the SPI stuff. And then the modes are pretty nicely set up, actually. Angle, horizon, the beeper set up in here as well, flip over after crash. So you just need to map everything to here. Of course, your arming does need to be on auxiliary one or channel five if you're using ELRS. The only thing I did do was clear up the on-screen display. This is very messy. 
I got rid of everything apart from my battery voltage timer and an LQ. All the stuff for the video transmitter is set up. There isn't a charger in the box, so you will need to use whatever charger you have, or if you don't have one and you're getting into the hobby, you're gonna to have to get your hands on one. Uh, it is an XT30 connector, so I just connect it up to my standard charger and away it went. Quick one about the radio and module. I know some people have asked me about this. I'm using this newer module from Beta FPV, links down below. Um, in my playing with it here, it has worked very well indeed. Uh, this is the information from the radio screen from the Lua script about the version of the code it's running on. I think this means that it is the beta FPV version. Uh, I will be doing a video soon of looking at the stuff that's coming in ELRS version 2.0. Hopefully beta FPV roll back and work a little bit closer with the ELRS project to make sure that any changes they do are being put back into the core project. In terms of the flying, let's talk about that. First of all, a little bit of footage, just hovering it indoors. Uh, this, although it's a, one of the slightly bigger whoop styles, is fantastic for flying indoors. In angle mode, it is incredibly stable and very forgiving. The only thing you need to do is just calm the throttle back a little bit, because again, it's hovering about a quarter throttle, which is easily enough to get in and out of trouble outdoors. So, talking about doors, what's it like to fly outside? Still, absolutely tons of fun. I've had a ball with this flying around in standard autumn weather. The low weight makes it really fast and agile and hovering about a quarter throttle gives it tons of power to get into and out of trouble easily. So even when it's a little bit windy like it was on this particular flying day, the quad doesn't really care about it at all. And if you do find yourself sinking towards the grass a little bit, then a blip of the throttle and you're back altitude. The only thing it took me a while to get my head around with this is because of the light weight, there isn't the same momentum and inertia that you get in a bigger quad when you are doing flips and rolls. So it does tend to drop out of the sky a little bit faster. So you need to be ready to catch it. The only issue on mine, as you're probably spotting here, is I'm getting some interference in the image on the camera. It isn't super duper. This is probably not just the ant camera. I'm probably getting a little bit of interference from something from the VTX as well. And that was the only downside of the plane that I've had here with it. Flight times I'm getting out of this is only about three minutes or just under three minutes if you fly aggressively. You can't get much more even if you fly it with a little bit of consideration and a lot more gently. So in summary, this is pretty close to what I would consider a perfect whoop. I like this larger size. It makes it more efficient and it makes it more stable. Still small enough to fly under the chairs indoors if you want to. And it's great for winter practice. It's a nice option for new pilots with that throttle calmed down a little bit. And it flies great indoors and outdoors, even on a windy day. Thanks mainly to plenty of power, nice tune as well. Now there's no current sensor on this from what I can see. I think this one is virtual. I haven't really been tracking the current sensor. I've just been using the voltage alerts in the on-screen display. And remember it is a fixed 30 degree camera angle, but in the flying I've done here, that's actually worked really well. I do like the fact looking on the Beta FPV website, they are starting to include things like CLI dumps which is great if you ever do accidentally do something that messes up your model. And also like the fact that it's using regular XT30 connectors, which means it can be charged by a standard regular LiPo charger, which can usually be done a lot quicker than some of the cheap and cheerful things that you get with other kits. Only a handful of gripes with this one. I would have liked more than one battery. Getting three minutes of flight time uh, isn't a lot. That's fine when you're flying, you know, around your dining room. But if you go to the field, you know, after two and a half minutes, you're starting to get warnings in the on-screen display and it's kind of time to land. You don't get a lot with it. So definitely would have liked more than one battery. And if you're interested in getting one of these, my top tip would be uh, get yourself at least another two or three batteries to go with it. The camera interference is disappointing. Uh, and although, to be fair, I've kind of been looking through it in the flying that I've done here because it is such fun to fly. Hopefully this is just an issue with my reviewer unit here rather than the general setup on the models. And I was also hoping for a little bit more flight time than three minutes. I would have liked to get four, maybe five minutes out of something like this. Uh, hopefully they'll make other versions that are more aimed at that slightly more endurance with kind of less uh, power 
but will give you slightly longer flight times. But overall, this isn't a bad little whoop at all. Well done, Beta FPV. Hopefully, as I said, that camera glitch is just an issue with the one that I have here. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.